I want you all just kind of take an inventory. Take an inventory of what you're doing right now. All right, where's your body? Where are your arms? Where are your legs? Are, how are you sitting in your chair? Uh, just kind of, kind of feel where that is, okay? Just kind of feel what you're doing. Um, I see, see a couple of arms crossed. I see a couple of... But when I, when I bring up posture to most people, right, to, to anybody I'm talking to, this is kind of the, the idea. This is the first thing that pops into their head is their mom nagging them to sit up straight. What advertisers think about posture, um, this, this is a billboard that is right outside my office. Like literally I walked out across the street and took this picture of this billboard. Um, and, and for those of you who can see it, I know that some of you are further away. Um, it says one of these men went to New Mail and they've got these three guys kind of kind of slouching over and, and one guy kind of ha ha, right? One of these, right? we all know that. So the question then is, is it possible that our body changes our mind. Does that work the other way? If it works in one direction, can it work in the other direction? And we all kind of are like, yeah, I, I can see that, sure. Right? We, we all kind of get that. But you guys are gonna join in with me here, ready? We're gonna do a little experiment. But I'm gonna need you to stand up. Can you do that? Can you stand up for me? All right. Give me your best Wonder Woman. <laughs> Give me your best, and, and for those of you who are a little, you know, it can be a Superman. If you feel like I'm not a woman, I, but I, okay. It can be a Superman, but, but give me your best Wonder Research Woman. on now. body language reveals that we can change other people's perceptions and even our own body chemistry, which is the important part, simply by changing body positions. This is deep, deep in your brain. This is really, really deep. See that posture? You know who that is, by the way? Bolt, yep, Usain Bolt. Fast guy, yeah. Would you say he's a confident guy? Yeah, you'd probably say he's a confident guy. Maybe a little cocky. Uh, bulging, herniated, ruptured discs is the biggest injury that lifters have. Uh, whether it be, this is a lumbar one, this is a cervical herniation up here. This is a reverse curve. Not only has it gone to straight, it's actually gone the other way, right? It's, it's now curving the opposite direction. Relatively common. A lot of people have this. Notice right where the reversal is, how tight the space gets. See how it, the space starts to narrow right there at that spot. Which is fine. You won't have any symptom until you bulge that disc a little bit. If you take care of this stuff, you get more power, stronger, right? Anybody here want to be stronger? Yeah, yeah of course you do. You're here because you want to be stronger, right? So here's the research. It actually shows that this muscle asymmetry affects power and force output, right? Power and force output, that's a big deal. Down here, I, I highlighted it for you. I'm not going to make you read the whole thing. Um, as a result of, of muscle asymmetry, jump height was reduced by power asymmetry by 10% or greater, an average of three and a half inches. You could jump three and a half inches higher if you were symmetrical. <laughs> Eric has uh, issues, I'm gonna come down here, has issues with trapezius, back of the neck yep. stuff, okay. And, and also some hip stuff. Yeah, so right. uh, In order to get the base of the head crooked, and this, and go in the same way, you actually need two curves between your shoulders and the base of your head. So in that little area, his spine goes whoop, whoop. The other thing I see, now look at this. See the ASIS and the rotation? There's the rotation. He was actually a little forward on his left hip when he was standing. What happened here? It switched. Both of those switched. How does that happen? I'll tell you. Organs. That actually comes from an organ dysfunction. Um, there's something going on, whether digestively or, or bladder or something going on stomach. There's something in here that is overactive. And this pressure, these, all this spine pressure and all of this stuff is starting to show up as an organ dysfunction. 
And now it might be enough that, I don't know if you're having any issues, you're 19, you might not have shown up yet. Um, you got all kinds of issues, like uh, digestive issues and stuff, yeah. He's got digestive issues, huh, funny, right? Hey, everybody, I got digestive issues. How did I know he had digestive issues? Because I saw it on his chart, right? We didn't discuss this at all. I saw that on his chart, that he had digestive issues, right? There are ways to catch these things before they become a problem, right? And all of that is about structure and neuromuscular strength. Podium, it's, it's, you're going to see his shoulders are level, right? We're going to fix this. We're going to get this better. And I've got some... What actually happened to her face? <laughs> well, I'm going to make it a little easier. You see what happened? Her facial symmetry is a mess. Understand this. Share this. Get the idea of neuromuscular strength. Of neuromuscular strength being the building block. You're, you're going to get so frustrated and you're going to want to quit. And you're gonna, like, get, get your building blocks there and build on top of them and become that just amazing person that you can become. So get rid of these distortions, right? Get rid of all that crap that's, that's causing you to, to turn and cause your organs not to work and, and do all of that stuff. And, and if you can do that, you can, right? You can become the strongest version of yourself, uh, which is what we're all here to do.